You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some... What's going on, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome to another NASCAR Authentics Wave Review for you guys here on this YouTube channel. This might be the final Wave Review I'm going to be doing for NASCAR Authentics 2019, and uh, <laughs> I really didn't think we were going to get another Wave Review, guys. I mean, uh, as you guys know, last year we did have 12 official waves for the 164 line of NASCAR Authentics 2019, but Lionel's been really busy this year, especially with the, with the newly, well, not really new anymore, but when it was new at the time, the 187s, they really kind of been a, a placement holder for um for uh, for the uh for the lack of the uh, 164 waves that we've been getting um probably explains why that little hiatus that we had uh from way four my god hopefully we never have a hiatus like that ever again but you know usually happens to chinese new year but anyways stop thinking about the past brian we're gonna be talking about the present and that is wave 10 for nascar authentics so i'm gonna go ahead and shut my uh big pie hole and show you guys the uh the uh, whole wave right here guys and might i say i mean wave nine was very impressive i mean it looks like lionel is really starting to roll in with the exclusives and i guess with all that feedback and all the good reviews from wave nine which by the way should be hitting the shelves very soon um we will be also getting uh this one right here guys wave 10 which is features the most exclusives that we've got this year for 2019 um, but the only downside about this wave uh, besides uh, <laughs> it being very late is that that nobody's gonna get this uh, wave even at the line of re racing retail store nobody's gonna get this until after the holidays so it's gonna be almost towards the new year we're gonna get this so I guess you can kind of consider this a 2020 wave but it's still considered a 2019 wave but this is mostly a dawn to throwback wave, guys, and I had a feeling we were going to have something like this because if you guys saw the uh, last uh, NASCAR Authentics wave review that I did, which was the um, the uh, the 187s with the two packs and the mystery bags, it's all dawn to throwbacks. So I had a feeling we were going to get some of these, and might I say I'm really surprised with some of these, and it's for all good reasons, guys. So um, this was just recently announced on the latest episode of Lionel Racing's The Fix, which, by the way, I want to get a quick shout-out to also to the uh, winner of the NASCAR Authentics um, a fan giveaway, which was uh, Devin Stiecast on Instagram. Um, congratulations, buddy. I mean, I'm glad that uh, <laughs> you're going to be getting a full year supply of NASCAR Diecast, so I decided to give that little shout-out right there. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this review started, guys. So the first one up, we got to talk about... One of the first exclusives to be talking about, and it is Corey LaJoy's number 32 uh, Keen Parts, Corvette Parts, um, Taunts a throwback Ford Mustang for Go Fast Racing. So, this is the second time we've had a Go Fast Racing car release for NASCAR Authentics, uh, along with the Jeffrey Earnhardt throwback from 2016, so nothing really new but i did not really but the, the, the and this is also uh, i believe the second coil of joy throwback that we also got released in nascar authentics if you guys remember his dr pepper throwback car from 2017 i believe so go fast racing and coil of joy um they've both been in nascar Authentics before but now they're together in this car right here in particular is really cool especially if you guys are a big fan of the crunch car that uh <laughs> I mean, my God, this paint scheme looks really cool. And this is a DMP as well, guys. So um, it was not produced and it was canceled in the 164 Gold Series um, the, the, in the boxes where you can get them at the diecast dealers. But this is an exclusive, guys. So you can get this car anywhere else. But really nice. I love the uh, silver rims on this. I mean, that's uh, another feature that they kept from the... Um, from the uh, previous uh, throwback car, which was Jeffrey Earnhardt's. So, really nice looking. I'm, my God, that looks really nice. And the Ford Mustang mold alone, just oh, beautiful. Uh, next up, we got another throwback car. It is Jimmy Johnson's number 48 Ally Financial uh, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for Hendrick Motorsports. So, this is a throwback to uh, one of his uh, trucks that uh, he drove uh, when he drove super trucks back in the day. So, that is really cool. Um, and I believe, I'm not mistaken, that the purple actually looks a lot more accurate compared to the Gold Series. I mean, if you guys saw, um, your, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm about to upload this video first before the next episode of the Diecast News. But um, I will be talking about the Jimmy Johnson Ally car in the Diecast News video because um, the purple is a lot more um, darker on the Gold Series. I don't know if that's just the quality of the photo or what. But it does look kind of dark, so it looks like this purple is a lot more bright and vibrant, and it looks really cool, guys. Plus, this is also the third Jimmy Johnson Ally car that we got released from NASCAR Authentics, so honestly, this one wasn't a big surprise. However, though, it's a really nice-looking throwback, and I am looking forward to do uh, the comparison of this car. Um, 
Plus, we haven't had a Jimmy Johnson throwback or released in quite a while now, guys. So, finally cool to see, actually, this car get released in NASCAR Authentics. And to go along with the Header Motorsports diecast, uh, we got to talk about, uh, of course, Chase Elliott and the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. So, I believe this is a uh, throwback to uh, his father, Bill Elliott. So, honestly, not surprised about this one right here. I mean, it is kind of a basic uh, looking design. It does look really cool, though. Um... And it looks like uh, they actually got the white right on this. I mean, uh, I know they screwed up on the prototypes where the white, where the headlights are, are is not really accurate. Uh, can't really quite tell, but uh, I, I don't know if the front view of this looks wonky. But then again, it is Lionel Racing 2019, so <laughs> it's probably going to get crooked like shit. Am I right? But, uh, you know, solid looking car. Really nice. I mean, again, honestly, like Johnson car, I'm not surprised that this was going to get released. So, um... Yeah, I mean, but probably is my least favorite car in this wave, to be honest with you, but uh, still a nice looking car regardless. Next up, we got another DMP Dawn to throwback car, and this one, I had a feeling they were going to make it because we've had a Joey Logano, we haven't had a Joey Logano diecast released, uh, I think, ever in the 164s yet for this year, which is pretty ironic considering that this guy was your uh, reigning champion from 2018. Uh, heck, we didn't even got his uh, Homestead Miami car produced in um, NASCAR Authentics, which I find really odd, but... Here we go, guys. We finally get a new Joey Logano diecast, and it is, it's his number 22 Shell Pennzoil Daunt throwback, which is ironically one of his rivals in NASCAR, Kevin Harvick, when he drove the uh, Shell Pennzoil car back in the RCR days. Plus, this paint scheme is also, I mean, a lot of people know this scheme because Harvick beat out Mark Martin in the Talisub Daytona 500s. I mean, that's probably the main reason why a lot of people know this car. I mean, I grew up with this car as well, to be honest with you guys. So, Definitely is a fan favorite paint scheme, I will say the least. I mean, a lot of people don't really consider a throwback as it's still kind of recent. But if you think about it, guys, Tail 7, it's um, it's like over 10 years old now, guys. I mean, uh, over 10 years old. So, yeah, that's, in, in my history books, that's pretty fucking old. So, <laughs> so um, and heck, we're about to hit to 2020 soon, guys. So, if you, if you guys don't think that's fucking old, oh, we're going to be even way more sh older <laughs> than that, guys. Especially when 2027 comes. Oh, ha. Uh. Holy crap. The time's going by too fast. But anyways, enough of me blabbering. This car right here kicks ass, especially with the Ford Mustang mold. I mean, mm, my God, just beautiful. Also pretty cool that uh, I believe all these throwbacks that we're getting in this wave, they all come with the same magnet. So kind of similar to what the 2016 throwbacks are doing when they came with the trading card. But it looks like all the throwbacks of this year are going to come with the, uh, with the uh, 3D hood, which is really cool. Next up, we got another Daunt throwback DNP in this wave. So this is yet another exclusive. It is Alex Bowman's number 88 Exalta Daunt's throwback Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 for Henry Motorsports. And if you guys don't know already, if you guys are a longtime classic NASCAR fan, you guys will automatically know this paint scheme, the Folger scheme, driven by the late R Tim Richmond, guys. My God, this car looks beautiful. I mean, I am disappointed that Exalta didn't want to change their logos. I mean, I don't think they ever changed their font or the logos of this car, um, unless, you know, <laughs> if, it, if it's a Jeff Gordon throwback, but you know, that that's the only part that I am disappointed, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's a very simple looking car guys, but I'm really surprised this car did got canceled in the 164 scale for the, uh, gold series. But, um, since they brought into the mystery packs, uh, in, in the 187 scale, then, um, yeah, I had a feeling that, that this was going to be released. So yeah, a third Henrik car released in this wave and can't go wrong with that. I think we're just missing William Byron's, uh, city Chevrolet car now, <laughs> Swear alert, that is not in this wave, but I to complete the whole set, I'm sure they're going to put that for um, for wave one of 2020. But um, yeah, I'm digging this car. This car is really nice. Looking forward to uh, get this car, even though it's very simple. But if you guys love Tim Richman and his uh, simple paint schemes, then this one right here, it is a great exception. Next up, uh, we got our second annual Michael Annette release, and it is uh, his number one Baby Ruth uh, Chevrolet Camaro for the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Junior Motorsports. So, if you guys are a big Jeff Gordon fan, you guys will know that this is a throwback to that car. But it is really cool that Baby Roots, the actual sponsor who sponsored this car way back then in the 90s, actually got on board and sponsored, you know, Michael Annette. You know, Michael Annette. <laughs> the guy who only got one freaking win in his career in NASCAR. So, uh, <laughs> I find that funny. But, heck, I mean, that's really cool that you got companies like that who... Uh, We'll have a one-time race deal. I mean, kind of like what, you know, Austin Dillon did with the Jack car, which I'm still disappointed that they didn't make that car in any of the scales. Um, Jack Daniels, gotta love that. But anyways, getting on topic about that, but I decided to point that out. But 
This card right here is really cool. This was also released in the 187 scale uh, in the in the uh, mystery pack. So when, when I heard about that, I was like, okay, well, th there's a good chance that this will probably make it in. And long before it did. So yeah, that proves my point that, you know, the 187 waves are quite uh, the prediction uh, indicator of what's going to be in the next few waves. Even though I didn't think we were gonna get, we're gonna get, we were, we were going to get another wave. But hey, I'm really digging this car. It looks really nice. Now, this one right here is about to, uh, this is not a Dodge throwback car, but it is another exclusive, and uh, I really did not think that they were going to pull this off. I really did not think, because this was, you know, a very underfunded team in the truck series, but it is Ross Chastain's number 45 True North Paul Jr. Designs Kansas Raced Truck. Holy crap. I can't believe they... I managed to pull this off. Now, I know one big indicator that people are not going to like about this car is that, yes, the confetti is missing on the front windshield. But you know what, guys? That's not really going to bug me because we've had a lot of confetti-colored cars before, all right? And, yeah, it does kind of bug me a little bit, but I don't think we've ever seen confetti on windshields before from the 164. So, you know, I can't really complain about that. I do complain about a lot of stupid nitpicky things because, you, know, you know, that's what I do. I am a diecast critic after all. <laughs> But, you know, I freaking love this car, man. I mean, I, I was so disappointed we got canceled on 164 scale because of all that confetti and just how bright the colors are. And, God, it's just such a cool-looking truck. And we finally get this truck in the 164 scale. I almost said car, but I guess a lot of people like me, uh, you know, screwing that up. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I, I, one of these days, I'm going to know my terminology of what a car and a truck is. <laughs> you know, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of those. But... Oh, man, just love roasting myself, but this truck just kicks ass, man. I mean, the first ever Ross Chastain truck that we ever got released for NASCAR Authentics, and it happens to be a truck, and it's a Nice Motorsports truck, which is freaking cool. I mean, I don't think they would ever have any merchandise, but Ross Chastain, man, he was one of the big contenders, one of the big four leading up to the uh, finale race, and man, it's Ross Chastain's time, man. I'm so glad we finally get this car in NASCAR Authentics, so definitely by far my favorite so far in this wave i mean th th this really just brings this wave to life all right we got two more to be talking about guys and next up um this car might look a little familiar if you guys saw the uh, wave two cracker barrel review uh indicating the leaked review which by the way lionel still has not posted about that yet so it's still considered leak because they haven't said anything about it yet but everyone has that freaking wave yet so <laughs> another fail from lionel but it is the 911 memorial car guys so so the cracker barrel waves are pretty useless as you can just see by that i mean uh <laughs> basically the cracker barrel wave is basically wave nine and this car right here in wave 10 guys that's a cracker barrel second wave so um you know i I am planning to do a diecast review on this car. I still not have reviewed the the the. the, the uh, I do have this car in, in the uh, in the Cracker Barrel wave, and I am planning to do a review on this. But you know what, guys? I wouldn't mind picking this car up again because of just how cool the packaging is. I mean, I know I can't. The picture doesn't really show that much. Uh, good quality um it just shows the die cast with it it has a special packaging to, to it which looks really cool with the 911 memorial service i mean uh, honestly guys i would just get that just because of how cool looking this car looks and the packaging and the little uh, magnet that comes with it i mean really cool very patriotic car and the, ho the whole meaning behind this car just really is cool especially if you guys are a big fan of the uh 911 tribute car that kyle bush drove in 2011 and ken Schrader drove in 2001 um that that will probably that uh, man i'm looking forward to do the diecast review on this which will be very very soon probably after next year because i have a lot of videos to uh, be covering before this year's up guys so <laughs> but really nice looking and the final exclusive dance throwback card to be talking about guys it is personally one of my all-time favorites and when i heard that this car got canceled and all the other Stuart haas throwbacks got canceled i was like my god this is going to be a depressing year. But NASCAR Authentics uh, always has to, you know, save the day. And that's the main reason why I fucking love NASCAR Authentics. I've had a lot of love-hate relationships with them. I mean, they make some stupid ideas with those cheap-ass 124s and those poorly made 187s. But at the end of the day, when they make these exclusive 164 diecasts, I mean, I just can't help but to love Lionel and what they do with these. But anyways, enough of me rambling and sound like I'm kissing ass. It is Eric Almarola's number 10. And Smithfield Dance Throwback, which is a throwback to Tony Stewart's first championship in the Cup Series. My God, guys, this diecast is just 
it's just fucking beautiful, man. I mean, you got the, the paint scheme is dead on right. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's a shame they couldn't get the Home Depot sponsorship, but they worked with what they got. And uh, the Smithfield logos actually look pretty nice with this paint scheme, to be honest with you. It doesn't feel out of place. Um, Especially how I like how they, uh, you know, change the colors on the side. Um, they, they left the white font on the hood and black font on the, uh, <laughs> On the sides, which is really cool, guys. I mean, it does look really nice, to be honest with you. And you're probably wondering what the liquid color chase piece is. Bingo! It is Eric Amarola's Smithfield car. And you know what? This diecast doesn't look too bad on the uh, on the uh, liquid color finish, guys. It really doesn't. I mean, uh, this is the second throwback car that we've got released in liquid color. So if you guys are if you guys are looking forward to get those throwback liquid color chase pieces, then this is another one add to the list because Truex is. is already on my list since I am a big Truex fan. I mean, <laughs> I'm probably have to, if, if you guys end up finding that or end up finding extra, I mean, feel free to DM me because I will be on board on all that. <laughs> but overall guys, wave 10, I mean, my God, guys, I'm loving all the throwbacks. I think, I, I know I said that I, I know I said that, you know, wave nine was the best, but you know, count me wrong again, guys. Wave 10 is fucking amazing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I mean, I know the quality control is going to be horrendous, so there is going to be paint chips. If you guys saw my first three reviews of Wave 9 for NASCAR, uh, for Wave 8 and NASCAR Authentics, then you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully, we'll get lucky and maybe these cars will look good, but I probably, we're probably not going to get that because, you know, this is Lionel Racing after all, so. <laughs> but yeah, guys, the, Wave 10 is a fucking 10, man. It, it's a 10 out of 10, 10 out of 100. I mean, Holy crap, this wave is just amazing. I love how half of the wave is mostly exclusive cars. And most of them are Don's throwbacks, which is freaking awesome. I mean, I really wish Lionel would do an all Don's throwback, uh, an all Don's throwback wave like they did in 2016. Cause that was cool. They had 16 cars released and that was an exclusive before Target came in and said, Hey, you know, we're not going to make this exclusive. So, um, don't think Lionel's ever going to do that ever again, but my God, it would be really cool though. But, uh, Heck, at least we got this in the 187s to be talking about, guys. But um, And hopefully we'll probably get some more throwbacks for Wave 1 or Wave 2 of 2020. Hopefully Ryan Blaney's Pennzoil car because, my God, I really, really want that car released in the 164 scale. Hint, hint, Ryan Blaney fan. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video of the uh, Wave 10 NASCAR Authentics 2019. Uh, my thoughts and opinions videos. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, video, guys, and this video series. I'm planning to do more of these for the upcoming uh, NASCAR Diecast season for 2020. So appreciate you guys' support. And this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. And I will catch you guys next year on another NASCAR Authentics Wave Review. Balls.